thing on Instagram, yeah. No, we're not on Instagram. <laughs> I'm joining the Instagram now. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, you see it on YouTube? No, you check YouTube? YouTube. I don't know where it went live on Instagram. Okay, can you check on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Did you have, you have the mic? I'm wearing the mic. Hey everyone, you can probably hear me, but you can't see me yet. Yep. YouTube Live's working? Mm-hmm. Great everyone, thanks for your patience. Been an exciting morning here. But we're getting there. Can you guys help me adjust the uh, focus of these? Can you help me focus these lenses after I get this about the same distance? And I'll be on camera, just frame me up. Okay. Can you check my audio on the the mic, like, see if these uh, levels are good. Mm-hmm. Say something. What's up, everybody? Happy Telecast Tuesday. It's Dan from Atlas Lens Co. We're here with some fantastic and exciting, interesting, strange new stuff. On this camera, we have the new. Atlas Sirius Series 65mm T2 one times anamorphic lens. And on this camera, we have the Atlas Orion two times anamorphic 65mm T2 lens. Hope everybody's having a fantastic Tuesday, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, what's up? Hope you guys have some questions. Here we are. So, been an exciting weekend uh, with the debut of the Sirius series lenses. If you haven't checked them out, go to YouTube or go to our Instagram or our website and search for Atlas Sirius series one times anamorphic lenses. So today we're going to just do a brief comparison of the one by Sirius series anamorphic lens and the two times Atlas Orion series. No, I'm just jumping all over the place, aren't I? The Atlas Orion two times anamorphic lens. Um, so one of the what are the features and benefits of a one by anamorphic lens. Well, first of all, you no longer have that distracting streak flare that comes from a two times or 1.5 times anamorphic lens. Uh, You also have the ability to create artisanal aspect ratios. So uh, we're looking at about a four by three aspect ratio coming out of our Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K here with the Atlas Sirius series lens. And on this side, we have the Panasonic BS1H with the Orion series, two times anamorphic lens. So does anybody want to see some flares today? Originally we were going to go with the Fujifilm, but we had some technical difficulties uh, getting the Fujifilm system with the D-squeeze going uh, through of our, both of our streaming platforms sim- simultaneously. And uh, as you know, we like to come at you live on both Instagram Live and YouTube Live simultaneously with a simulcast. Uh, and we're you know always refining and developing our processes here. Uh, But we wanted to show you these specific cameras and these specific lenses because we had some special requests for them. So I'm going to very briefly show you the difference in flare between a Sirius series lens on a Kinefinity Mavo Edge right here and the flare from our Orion series 65mm two times anamorphic lens here on our Panasonic BS1H. And you'll notice the overall difference. So these are both the same focal length. This is a 65 millimeter, this is a 65 millimeter, and this is our fantastic one times Sirius series anamorphic lens, and this is our two times 65 millimeter Orion series lens. So with an anamorphic lens with a two times aspect coefficient, you're gonna get twice as much horizontal field of view for any given focal length as your vertical field of view. 
and with a spherical lens, or as we like to call it, a one by anamorphic lens, uh, like the Sirius series, you're going to get the ability to have an artisanal aspect ratio with uh, advanced symmetrical system technology. So you can see that we have a very nice even frame. Your bokeh is nice and round. Uh, Matt, if you don't mind throwing it out of focus, the minimum focus to show the bokeh, you see that beautiful traditional round bokeh. Gorgeous flare without the streak. And if you could focus back on me. And we're joined today by Matt, who's running the technical production of our Tuesday telecast. We've got Oksana helping take care of the boards of uh, interaction. If you have questions out there, Oksana is going to help relay those questions to me. And we have Miet also holding down the fort. Uh, big salute to everyone on the Atlas team here helping make the Tuesday telecast possible. So are there any questions we can answer for you? I uh, just wanted to show you the Sirius series firsthand compared to an Orion series. And then after a little bit, we're going to put up a Mercury series 42 millimeter versus an Orion 42 millimeter. So you could see the difference between a 42 millimeter Mercury and a 40 millimeter Orion because they're relatively similar focal lengths, but very different anamorphic coefficients. Um, so Oksana, if you have any questions you'd like to relate to me, I'm, I'm happy to help address those for our audience today. There is a question from YouTube about uh, one time squeeze, and the question is this What were the technical limitations that you faced moving from 1.5 squeeze from the Mercury to the one squeeze in the series lens? Well, you know, people say it's always hard once you've gone forward to go back, but we see this as an advancement forward in terms of developing an entirely new category of anamorphic lens. Uh, with a one-time squeeze. So with the advanced symmetrical system technology we've imbued uh, with the redaction of two key elements in the Sirius series, uh, we've managed to create an incredible symmetrical lens experience. Uh, what some people might traditionally call a spherical lens design, we like to think of it as a one-time xenomorphic lens because it's based on our Orion series platform uh, with some special modifications. Any other questions out there from YouTube or Instagram that I can help answer for everyone? Mm, there's one from Corey's about hiring. If we are hiring, and what's the best way to apply? Ah, the best way to apply, we're hiring for all kinds of positions here at Atlas. The best way to apply is by emailing info at atlaslinsco.com with your curriculum vitae. Let us know what you're interested in doing with us. And of course, we'll pass that information to our HR specialists and to the individual departments within the company uh, to help see if there's a good fit. And then we can set up an interview. So I'll just wait for a few moments. I'll show you a few more flares. Um, Matt, if you want to go to minimum focus on both lenses, we'll just show the bokeh difference between the two lenses while Oksana keys up a few other questions from the team. And then we will put up a Mercury uh, 42 versus an Orion 40 millimeter. And after too long, I'll probably go head out to lunch in a bit. So, yes. What use cases do you see the Sirius lenses being suited for? We think the Sirius series are really fantastic for any creator looking to impress other content creators. Uh, take a look at our fantastic film created by Rick Darge on our YouTube channel. Um, the title of that piece is uh, Between Light and Sound. No, what's the title of that one? For the, for, the technical, for the technical benefits, be sure to check out the Atlas Series series Explained, and we go in in-depth technical overview of how the lenses function. Um, but to see, you know, sort of a great representation of how the Sirius lenses perform in real life, definitely check out um, that piece in the Sirius series playlist. Um, with a fantastic Vinny Balbo starring. Really beautiful piece and uh, highly representative of the kind of character you can expect from a serious series lens. Hope my sound is good. If I'm not sounding good today, let me know. Let us know. We'll do our best to technically improve that situation for all of you out there in Streamland. Um, and if there's things that you want to see that you haven't seen from us, be sure to email us at info at atlaslensco.com. Make some special requests. 
Uh, one of the special requests I'm going to try to address today is comparing a 42 millimeter Mercury against a 40 millimeter Orion. Uh, we saw that through one of our team members on Facebook, and so we're going to directly put those up so you can sort of see the difference easily and quickly. Um, and next week, we're going to try to do something with two of the same camera. So we've been mixing different cameras. Last week, we had a uh, red appreciation day with the red Raptor and the red Komodo side by side, looking at different lenses and comparing um, the different focal lengths and field of view with uh, Mercury series 36 and 42. And today we're gonna do something like that similarly in a moment, uh, comparing a 40 millimeter Orion against a 42 millimeter Mercury. And uh, today we've got the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K and we have the fantastic Panasonic BS1H. Um, these are both really spectacular cameras. Both have full frame sensors, but you can really get granular control over things like anamorphic de-squeeze in camera with both of these cameras. You have really granular control of aspect ratio. As we were saying, uh, the series series are fantastic for artisanal aspect ratio development. Um, so yeah, uh, in a moment, I'm just gonna switch lenses if there's no more questions about the series series versus Orion series comparison. What are the major differences in the visual properties between a spherical and a one times anamorphic? That's a fantastic question. Effectively, there are no differences between a traditional spherical lens and a one times anamorphic lens. YouTube user has a question about naming. Um, why the Orion set? Why the Mercury set? Ah, yes. That's a, actually a really great question. So um, the history of Atlas Lens Co., you know, going back to the initiation of our development phase in 2015, uh, Forrest and I both love the notion of pioneering and space exploration and sort of the relationship between human beings and the greater world, the greater universe outside. And uh, as humans, since ancient times, we've looked up at the stars and admired the night sky. And so we want to imbue the concept of a constellation because the first lenses that we introduced were the Orion series. Uh, the way that we named them were that we were coming out with three lenses. So the minimum viable plan is a very small startup trying to build lenses for the first time was to create a group of three because, you know, one lens is great, but three lenses is really sort of a minimum viable set to have different magnifications if you're making a feature film or a commercial. It really helps to have different focal lengths. And so we, we decided upon making three as like the biggest and also most uh, level-headed approach to what we could do as a very small company starting. So a minimum viable plan of three. And if you look up in the night sky around uh, December 21st, which is my birthday, uh, a prominent constellation that I, will, I would always see in the night sky would be Orion's Belt. And so you'd have the three uh, unique stars that make up the primary section of Orion's Belt. And we also love classic movies. I mean, that's one of the reasons we started Atlas Lens Co. And if you look at uh, movies from the late 70s and early 80s, some of the best, in my opinion, films were released through Orion Pictures Entertainment, so we wanted to pay homage to Orion Pictures, um, to the tradition of constellations and humans watching the night sky, and also embed sort of uh, meaning related to space exploration and uh, that relationship between people and the greater universe. So I hope that answers that question. Mercury uh, represents um, the planet closest to the sun, so it's a hot planet. Um, and it's also uh, an ancient mythological god, you know, a, a winged messenger um, that's fast. And, you know, when you're thinking of something that's fast, you often think of something that's light and small. And so we wanted to sort of embed um, part of human mythology. And, you know, they're kind of a silver color. So Mercury as an element is metallic. Um, and so just sort of embedding that connection, that through line that exists between early humans and modern humans in space, um, because we just think that the notion of pioneering and the relationship between humans and the greater universe is a really exciting thing to explore thematically. So I hope that answers that question. There's another question. 
people are guessing. So if there is no difference between spherical and anamorphic, why lose portion of uh, AUF uh, 16 by 9 sensor? Um, Sorry? I think it's... Uh... Oh, well, in this case, we're referring to the Sirius series, right? So definitely, if you haven't checked out the Sirius series technical explainer video on our YouTube, I'd highly recommend that because that will really elucidate and clarify everything you need to know about why a one by anamorphic lens, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yes, so the Sirius series are a variant of an Orion series. And so today we have a 65 millimeter Orion here on this camera and we have a 65 millimeter Sirius series. And for all intents and purposes, these two lenses are the same with the redaction of two key optical groups from the lens, if you can guess what I'm saying. Uh, we removed all the anamorphic components in the Sirius series. And so we like to call the Sirius series a one by anamorphic, if you get my drift. But maybe they're, maybe they're asking about format sizes. I mean, if it's not too hard, if you could switch to uh, 6K 16 by 9 on the um, Avo Edge, that could show kind of a different aspect ratio. As we said, the Sirius series are great for creating artisanal aspect ratios. So maybe this will help um, elucidate that possibility further. Uh, 5.765 or 8K UHD? Mm, try that one. Let's see. UHD? I mean, it's, it might vignette. I mean, the UHD one? Yeah, let's try it. Someone, someone says, um, when we can buy Atlas from the Wizard Moses. I don't know what that means, but. Um, <laughs> so we're now in. We do have the Orion series in stock and available now in limited quantities. So if you're looking to buy something and have a two times anamorphic lens in your hands within the next week, get in touch with our fantastic sales team. Just email info at atlaslensco.com. We can generate a custom quote for you. We have a small number of Orion series lenses ranging from 21, 25, 32, 40, 50, 65, 80, and 100 as well as our 1.4 times expander and our 1.6 times extender available and shipping now. Uh, for Mercury series, those are going to be available later this year, but we have pre-orders open still. So if you're looking for a light, compact, full frame, 1.5 times anamorphic coefficient lens, definitely check out the Mercury series. We think they might be for you. Uh, if you are visiting Las Vegas, Nevada for the NAB show in just a couple weeks here, we hope to see you. Uh, we're really excited for this show. We're going to be showing the Orion series, the whole range, the Silver Edition Orion series, the Sirius series lenses, just a couple prototypes, and the Mercury 36, 42, and 72, and we have a special guest, the Mercury 54 millimeter. So we're going to be showing the first working prototypes of a Mercury 54 millimeter at the NAB show in just a couple weeks. Uh, so if you haven't gotten your tickets to visit Vegas, loosen up, have a great time, and, you know, see your friends who you haven't seen for a few years, this will be a great opportunity. So we hope to see all of you who can, uh, no matter where you are in the world, make a pilgrimage out to Vegas and come have fun with us at the NAB show. Uh, we sure, we're sure there's going to be a few surprises for everyone. So can't wait to see you there. And so I think, is the 16 by 9 looking good? Are we vignetting on this one? No. Great. So, um, and that's 8K? 8K UHD. Great. So we're sending 8K UHD out of the Kinefinity Mavo Edge here with an Atlas Sirius series lens. Um, if you're just joining, I'll hit us with a little flare one more time. And we'll compare that to the Orion series flare here. And yeah, maybe, is there a way to show a... Um, 239 or 235 or 240 extraction with this one before we switch over to showing the difference between an Orion series 40 millimeter and a Mercury series 42 millimeter. Okay, 240, 7.6. Perfect. 7.6K, 240. That's fantastic. So we're going to show you a 240 aspect ratio using this. Four to one. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Thank you so much, Matt. Mm -hmm. We're really fortunate to have Matt helping us run the technical side of things today while I'm speaking with you fantastic people out there. It's really 
a very fortunate uh, day that we have. And, you know, we were having all kinds of technical difficulties. Way more complicated than you might think getting two cameras streaming with the squeeze into Instagram Live and YouTube Live with decent sound all at the same time. So I'm so grateful that we have Matt, Matt's fantastic help, Oksana's fantastic help, and Miet here helping us get things done. So, you know, I couldn't do it without our team. Really grateful for all of you. And uh, yeah, take a look at that beautiful 2.4.0 aspect ratio out of a Atlas Sirius series compared to the 2.4.0 uh, aspect ratio. It might be 2.6.6 to 1 coming out of the Panasonic BS1H here, um, depending on our settings, I'm not really sure. But yeah, hope you're enjoying this little uh, comparison side by side. And uh, it's gonna go dark in a moment, or actually might go light in a moment, as Matt and I switch from a Sirius Series 65 millimeter and an Orion Series 65 millimeter, and then put up a 40 millimeter Orion side by side with a 42 millimeter Mercury. So who's ready for that? And uh, meanwhile, while you're doing that, Oksana will help relay questions to me via audio. So you can continue asking questions. Uh, and I'll keep talking with you as I help Matt switch lenses. And uh, if there's YouTube or Instagram comments, um, if anybody's seeing any me yet, if you're seeing any, feel free to just holler those out to me while Matt and I switch lenses. One here. But did you watch Orion Mercury? Stuff? I think what's easier, honestly, I think probably putting Mercury right on this guy. Okay. I'll, I'll do this one if you want to do that one, if you can get that configured. We have a question about the 36 millimeter. Why, why a 36 millimeter focal length? And are we going to go wider? So the 36 millimeter uh, mercury is way wider than you might expect because of the anamorphic coefficient. So a 36 millimeter is a 36 millimeter vertically, no matter whether you're on a super 35 sensor or a full frame sensor. Um, just think about it relative to whatever sensor system you're using. Uh, but horizontally, because of the 1.5 times coefficient, it becomes effectively a 24 millimeter. And so a 24 millimeter on full frame is very, very wide actually. Um, but to that end, why did we choose it? We have a golden ratio relationship um, between the different um, we have a golden ratio relationship between the different uh, focal lengths. And so that's really why we chose um, 36, 42, 54, 72, 95, and 138. And so it's not immediately apparent um, when you're hearing about them, but I think we do owe sort of a technical explainer on the uh, golden as the golden ratio relationship between the aspect ratios and the focal lengths. So you really get a tremendous um, opportunity when you compare these different lenses for different delivery formats. And so what what mode are we in here on the We're in the same super thirty five. Okay, great. You wanted to be in super thirty five here? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm set. Um, and if you could just check my focus to make sure I'm crisp. So what we're showing now is on the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K in Super 35 mode, we've got a Mercury 42 millimeter lens. And on the Panasonic BS1H in Super 35 mode, we have an Orion series 40 millimeter lens. So 42 and 40, um, there are gonna be differences in terms of the vertical angle of view because of the sensor size being slightly different between these two cameras in their different modes, but they should be fairly similar. Uh, would you say that's correct, Matt? Yeah. Pretty similar. close, right? And um, horizontally, you're going to see probably a significantly wider image on the Orion series because of the two times anamorphic coefficient left to right. So is this in a 4.3 recording mode on the Orion? Or is it in a 16.9 mode? I think it's in a 16.9. Okay, can, yeah. we, can we switch that without too much trouble to a 4.3? 
might be a little difficult. Okay. So you're seeing a lot because you're seeing um, a 69 base recording mode with a two times anamorphic coefficient. So you end up with 32.9, which ends up being like 3.55 to 1, which is a massively wide delivery aspect ratio. And then on this side, we have the Mercury series with a 1.5 times coefficient, and we're in a 16 by 9 base recording format mode. So when that gets de-squeezed, it comes out to 2.66 to 1, which is the same traditional base aspect ratio of a CinemaScope format. CinemaScope began in the 1950s, and they were using 4x3 film with a 2 times anamorphic. And so you'd have a master that's 266 to 1, but then that would get matted down on the sides because of sound. So they would either have uh, magnetic sound stripes that would go over the film or optical sound that would be embedded in the film, and that would eat into some of the negative area. And so you'd have it matted down to oftentimes between 240 and 235 to 1 as your delivery aspect ratio. Um, but the, ma the master recording, you know, right onto the original negative was 266 to 1. And so that's what you still get when you have a 4.3 recording mode emulating those old film cameras with a two times anamorphic. And so we wanted to create a direct relationship and through line with a modern 16 by nine sensor recording mode like you might see and you're sort of constrained to uh, with a lot of the mirrorless cameras. You know, they do have DCI recording modes, but many of them, you only have a 16 by nine recording format. So if you're looking at something like a Sony FX3, a Canon R5C, uh, baseline, I mean Panasonic is amazing because they've got so many different recording formats you really can get granular um, but their baseline recording format as we were set to was 16.9. Uh, the Fujifilm X-H2S which has a really cool 3x2 but also records in 16x9. And so by having that 1.5 anamorphic coefficient um, you really get a lot of delivery aspect ratio options when using a Mercury series with the ability to use the most pixels from your sensor possible um, given some of the limitations of certain smaller camera recording modes. Um, and then with the Orion series, those are really meant to embrace traditional CinemaScope format. They're great for film cameras, but so are the Mercury. But they're really meant and designed around a traditional 4.3 aspect ratio uh, which is what you know most Kodak film for four perf is, uh, and things like Alexa Classic in four by three mode. Um, so we wanted to embrace sort of the traditional aspects with the Orion series, and then create a bridge between traditional style thinking and modern thinking with the Mercury series. Um, so while I show you guys some flares, if anybody wants to throw out some questions to me about um, the comparison between the Mercury series on this camera and the Orion series on this camera, I'm happy to help you. And, you know, hopefully we didn't lose anything on the crop on the YouTube. It's totally possible we did um, because we were doing all kinds of things with OBS Studio to frame it up. But, you know, we're just doing the best we can. We're going to learn from it and do better next time if we didn't do great today. So you can see that golden amber streak flare on the mercury here and you could see that beautiful light blue teal streak flare on the Orion series here and uh, I'm happy to field any questions anyone has out there about anamorphic lenses in general cinematography on digital and film camera systems uh, the Sirius series which we released on April 1st uh, or anything else Atlas or cinematography related and soon we're going to have some guests so be sure to tune in if you can't make it to the NAB show floor in Vegas. Uh, be sure to, to tune in because we're going to be doing daily live streams for about 20 minutes from the show floor before the show opens direct from Vegas. Any questions I can help answer? There's one about the difference between the expander and the extender. Yes, yeah, so the expander and the extender, we named them differently, but essentially they can kind of do the same thing. So. The expander is a 1.4 times magnification. The extender is a 1.6 times magnification. So they both will extend the focal length of the lens. And so if you're using a Super 35 system and you use either of these, they'll give you a greater magnification. So if you have a 100 millimeter Orion and you put the 1.4 times on, that will give you a 140 millimeter effective focal length with a light loss of one stop. 
if you put the 1.6 times on, that will give you a 160 millimeter effective focal length mm -hmm. with a one and one third stop loss of light. Mm -hmm. They both will expand and extend the image. So if you're trying to use an Orion series lens on something like a Sony Venice and use the entire open gate mode or something like the Airy LF sensor or um, any number of full frame digital camera cinematography systems, both the 1.4 and 1.6 times expander and extender will allow every Orion series to cover that sensor format edge to edge completely. Whether you need that edge to edge coverage or not, that's up to you to decide. But those two accessories will allow all Orion series to cover all full frame sensors edge to edge uh, and just at different magnification ratios. So you might get more funkiness with the 1.4 because you're using a larger portion of the original Orion image to fill that full frame sensor and that's sort of a aesthetic choice that you can make. Um, and your focal length number does go up. So if you have like a 40 millimeter and you put a 1.4 times on, you end up with effectively a 56 millimeter lens at a T2.8. But 56 millimeter on a full frame sensor is still the same magnification essentially. So you're gonna get a very wide angle field of view uh, you're not going to have much light loss and you're going to have really good image quality. So we just want to offer people a very diverse array of options in terms of filling their formats and creating unique opportunities in cinematography. And one of the cool things is that the 1.4 times expander, even though it's not necessary to cover full frame systems with the Mercury lenses, it does actually work with all of the Mercury lenses so you can kind of create in between focal lengths that didn't exist. Um, so it's a way of kind of, if you only have one lens, you can actually double up your available focal lengths by using the expander and extender. Uh, and the 1.6 will actually work with most of them, barring uh, infinity focus on the 36 millimeter. So the 1.6 extender will work with the 42, the 54, the 72, the 95, and the 138 to give you even more reach with the Mercury lenses. Um, so just do the math if you want to. Uh, you can magnify the focal length by that expander or extender number. And if you're confused about any of this, there's a really fantastic tool available from phfx.com. Uh, one of the tools is called Format Compare. That'll let you compare two camera systems with different lenses and different formats. The other one is called Shot Prep, which is really great for envisioning the way anamorphic aspect ratios will work no matter what type of lens or what type of camera system you're using. And we have one more question coming in from the audience that Oxana is going to help relate to me. YouTube question, uh, do the extender and extender affect squeeze factor, meaning if I use it as mercury's, would I get more squeeze than one? Great question. So to relay the question again, uh, thank you whoever you are on YouTube. Does the extender or expander affect the anamorphic coefficient of squeeze? No, it does not. So the Expander and extender accessories work great with all the Atlas lenses, but they'll also work great with a spherical lens of any type, pretty much. Uh, there are check gauges that we offer that will let you see if the optics will collide with the rear of your optics on your spherical zoom, for instance. So if you have an ingenue uh, or something like one of the fantastic Canon cine zooms, you can take our check gauge and see if the optics protrude too far back and will impinge or interfere with our expander or extender accessory. Um, and generally, they perform pretty darn well with other lenses, but your mileage may vary. Depends on your lens, depends on your situation. They're optimized around Atlas lenses, um, and we have the most information available about that, but we encourage you to test everything on a case-by-case -case basis and experience for yourself. But to directly answer that question, our expander and extender will not affect your anamorphic squeeze ratio at all. Um, Matthias asks for, please explain the back focus on the 1.4. I guess it would Yeah, great question, Matthias. Thank you. So on our 1.4 expander, we do have a built-in back focus adjustment. And the back focus adjustment serves two purposes. So if you're in the field and you're experiencing less than optimal focus quality, you can actually get out a lens test chart and... Uh, set your focus marks on the lens to the distance measured from your film plane to that chart and then very slowly and gently adjust the back focus with that adjustment on our 1.4 times expander 
and at some point you'll find it might look better than another setting when you find that number because it's indexed with numbers you can tighten the screw and set it at that and take a note that that's the best back focus for that it also serves the ability to create sort of a bespoke detuning adjustment for atlas or other lenses if you want uh, your lenses to have more aberration or to perform differently you're open to experimentation uh, and you can turn the, the back focus positive or negative um, up to something like uh, 10, 10 marks in either direction and so you can actually keep a note of how much uh, positive or negative back focus adjustment affects the lens detune in a way that you like so if you're using something like a Canon K35 24mm which has a floating element group and uh, aspherical elements uh, adjusting that back focus will affect your focus marks but will also affect the overall performance of the lens in terms of sharpness and aberrations and so if you want to aberrate the lens more you can actually intentionally detune it by throwing the back focus off on the expander um, not that you need the expander but by having that 1.4 times uh, with a 24 millimeter let's say that you don't have a k35 35 millimeter which is one of those super rare ones um, you actually end up with about a 34, 35 millimeter focal length by using the 24 millimeter uh, lens with our 1.4 times expander. So that's a way of kind of filling out your set. Um, obviously you're gonna lose a stop of light, but you still have the f-stop. So if you're shooting wide open for aberrations, you can still shoot wide open. You're gonna have the same amount of aberrations and, and your bokeh won't be affected by shooting at a 1.4 versus a uh, two, uh, effectively a two transmission, but a 1.4 f-stop. So, kind of a neat option, and um, you know, if any of this doesn't make sense, every Wednesday we do Wednesday Lens Day. Uh, big shout out to Sarah Weldon for suggesting the name of our Wednesday open house be Wednesday Lens Day. I think that was just like the coolest suggestion from last week, so um, we love meeting everyone out there in the cinematography community, no matter where you are. If you are passing through Glendale, California, we invite you to come down. Our house is your house. We open the doors at about 10.30 or 11 a.m. And we really want to let people experience the world of cinematography in your hands. So we have plenty of cameras here, tons of lenses, but we encourage you to bring your own cameras. And if you want to bring your own lenses to do side-by-side -side comparisons, even if they're not anamorphic lenses, we love lenses so much here. Bring lenses, do your own comparisons, experiment, record, share what you found with the community. That's really what Atlas is about. So we hope to see you here tomorrow on Wednesday, Wednesday. And if not tomorrow, we hope to see you next Wednesday, Wednesday. And um, we will be doing a Wednesday, Wednesday in Vegas. So hope to see all of you at either at NAB or here at our headquarters in Glendale, California. Okay, I think we went a little overtime today. So I'm excited to eat lunch. I don't know, you know, if you're here on the west coast of the United States, you're probably hungry. You might be hungry for a